if you stop putting so much focus on managing tasks and start to become aware of the managing of the time, your tasks won't own you. You'll feel that you are able to enjoy what you're doing, which is the achievement, right? When you shift the focus, focus? <laughs> when you shift the focus from tasks to the results that you get, there's, you can feel the energy shift if you pay attention to, say you had a list in front of you, the ta-da list right in front of you of everything, the brain dump that you've done that morning perhaps or the evening before, which is a good idea too. When you shift from this, oh, this overwhelming list that's there to the result you'll have because you've learned to honor your time and because it's time management, but it's mostly about honoring your time. It's different than just being busy. You are effective. Hi, I'm Vicki Baird, and I have created my successful business by helping other people become successful in their own lives. This podcast, Intuition, Your Success Compass, is the tool you've been looking for to find your due north. We all have a soul and we all have an internal knowing. And in this podcast, you will learn to combine what your soul knows, your human self's brilliant intelligence, and the connection to the desire to live a life that is fully successful in whatever that definition is for you. Sound good? Good. Now let's get to it. Well, that title pulls you right in, didn't it? We are going to make time management sexy. No, we're not. But we are going to make it fun. Maybe revealing. How about entertaining? Or perhaps encouraging? And we'll also make it possible, for goodness sakes. I will readily admit that the first time I thought about doing a time study or managing time, I was like, forget it. It's not going to work. It's not possible. You know, starting out positive is the way to go. But a lot of that doubt was because at the time I had three kids I was raising. I was working. I was volunteering. I believe at the time we were in the middle of buying our house or, you know, in that whole process. And I was so overwhelmed. My brain just could not handle one more thing. And yet there was this pull to understand where the heck was all of my time going? Like what happened <laughs> at the end of the day? And that's literally what got me there was at the end of the day, I'd be like, where did my day go? I feel like I just went from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next. And that was, geez, that was even before all of this technology and the social media distractions or the ability to text someone. Yeah, I'm talking the dinosaur ages, people, dinosaurs. So time management was not something I was very familiar with, but I was intrigued enough to consider it because at the time I was also running a billing department and the amount of pressure that was on me to create the finances for the business, well, to get the AR cleaned up and to get the funds in that the staff had already serviced, but to make sure that that flow of money was there was intense. And I thought, I better get a handle on all of these tasks that I have to do in order to create that flow, create the money that was coming in. Because at the time, the person before me did do a good job. She was very much overemployed. It just built up. Not only did we have to keep it moving, and by we, I mean me. I was the billing department at that time. I also had to create systems that would allow for me to have time to bill. And I didn't know it at the time. I thought it was just, this is a great job. It was an increase in pay, a much more kind staff to work with. So I thought, let me in there. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do it successfully. I did. 
But at the time, I was way over my head. So I started grappling for anything that could help me create a system. I think this is where my love of systems was actually born. Because when you take something that's, you know, $500,000 in arrears and you get that caught up, the joy that's there, it's like a game with people's livelihoods at stake. But I wouldn't let myself think about that at the time. <laughs> I was like, ah, the board will take care of it just to have less pressure on myself. I feel like this is where some of my love of systems came from. And why when people ask me about my business and they're like, well, who does that? And I'm like, I do. Who does that? I do. They're like, are you kidding me? And I'm like, no, it's fun. Yes, now I have the amazing Enrique who just continues to surprise me every day with his skills and his humor and the way to see what we are cooking up behind the scenes, peeps. So this was another reason that I thought this is a good time for the talk of is time management versus task management, and how can I help you to create what might be a more enjoyable process of life for you? Because I don't know about you, but I was not taught these things. I was not taught to be mindful other than when homework assignments were due, which, yes, of course, I waited till the last minute to do them. But when I was growing up or even when I was working, much like the information was not there about physical or financial issues, health, money, all of that. None of it was available to us or taught to us. So when I started looking at how am I going to create this and not lose my mind, because what I failed to mention is I didn't know how to do the billing in this company because I had gotten the job by telling the person who who was interviewing me that billing was billing and I'm sure I can figure it out. Steep learning curve, steep learning curve. I like a challenge. So when you think of time management, what do you think of? Do you feel like it's someone leaning over your shoulder saying you've wasted five minutes? What are you doing? Do you feel like it's not possible because then you lose your flexibility and your sense of freedom? Do you feel that you just don't have the wiring for that? Um, I often have joked with Mike that he did not get a clock installed in his brain. He, I really believe this. This is not a slight on him. He, much like my sense of direction, yes, I know the irony of having a podcast called The Success Compass. Well, I need to use compasses because... This gal does not know which way is north, south, east, west. But like that, we all have our skills, right? Mike does not have a clock in his head. Time management is not his greatest skill set. It is mine, and he's good at directions. So see, we make a good pair. And occasionally, we make it out of the woods before the sun sets because of my ability to manage time and reality. So you may not have that capacity, but you can still create and use skills that are not readily installed, but that you create. And I'd like to talk about some of that. But first, I want to talk about the difference between time management and task management, because I feel like they get merged. And when I'm talking to someone about what's gone on in their days or how can we be help them to be more happily productive, not a machine, but happily productive. It feels good to get things done, cross them off your list. Most people do not differentiate between time management and task management. And it's worth knowing that there is a whole universe of difference between the two. So time management is the process of planning, organizing, having an idea of what specific activities are on board, It enables you to work, you know, that expression, work smarter, not harder. It really does help in this area. You'll be able to get more done in less time. And sometimes even on a tight timeline and high pressures. And when practiced can help you to have less stress around those times 
and let's face it, better reputation, the ability to advance in your career if you would like it, like to do that. Example of that, I had said I was teaching class last night and I had said to Mike in the morning, well, I look forward to finding out what I'm teaching tonight. It's our weekly or sorry, our monthly Wisdom Wednesday. And each month they're standalone. They, although sometimes I will refer to what we've talked about before, but I'll take a topic and we educate about it. And then we have dialogue about it and then we laugh and then we're fools and we celebrate within the group when someone has a success. But I didn't know what we were talking about last night. So I got it pulled together during the day. And Mike, when he got home, he said, so what did you teach? And it was about coping mechanisms, which there will be a podcast about that too coming up. And strategies and the fun of that too. See, you can make any dry topic fun if you're just playful. And he's like, but you didn't have it done this morning. And I'm like, nope, I didn't. But you know what I do have? Phenomenal time management. <laughs> so there was an hour in my day and sitting down, I focused, I got her done and showed up to the class ready to go and excited about the topic. And some of that has to do with understanding that there's energy in time management. So when you're calm and when you're in flow or alignment, there'll be less block that you're putting up. So when your energy is all kind of excited to get something done or to you know, delve into a project, you will be able to produce much more efficiently. And yeah, I don't know, sometimes that having that accomplishment point deadline, the time that has to be done, it can be a motivator. I like to think of it as an inspiration. Like I had to get it done. I had to show up in integrity and know what I was talking about. So time management, when you develop the skills, will give you that because when you sit down to focus, <laughs> it just flows. So task management is just what it sounds like. It's there's work to be done and you need to manage the task also through planning and then development and then completion. It has an effect on time management, but time management allows you to achieve more in a shorter timeline which can lead to more free time and enjoyment about what's on that to-do list because I'm not going to suggest that there's not a to-do list. Of course there is. We're human. We're never going to get it all done, so stink and relax. There's always going to be laundry to do. There is always going to be something that needs to be addressed or someone who needs to be called back, all of that. But when you are focused on tasks, it's very difficult to be in the flow state. It's incredibly challenging to feel like there's even sufficient time in the day. And I know you've heard that expression, everyone has 24 hours and some people manage to achieve more with those 24 hours. Well, I'll tell you why. Because if you're in flow and in alignment and you have already set up some of the systems Sometimes an hour can feel like you just worked for four hours in a very accomplished place, not your back hurts and your butt's asleep kind of place. I feel like those, and I've witnessed this and I've seen the change in myself, that when I switched to more of a time management idea, about a year ago, I got really firm in this and really fine even, fine-tuned it. I stopped making it about the to-do list. And thinking, oh, goodness gracious, I got to get all that done and more about the time management. And I'll talk about the ways that I did that in a moment. So if you stop putting so much focus on managing tasks and start to become aware of the managing of the time, your tasks won't own you. You'll feel that you are able to enjoy what you're doing, which is the achievement, right? When you shift the focus, focus, <laughs> when you shift the focus from tasks to the results that you get, there's 
you can feel the energy shift if you pay attention to, say you had a list in front of you, the ta-da list right in front of you of everything, the brain dump that you've, that you've done that morning perhaps or the evening before, which is a good idea too. When you shift from this, oh, this overwhelming sometimes list that's there to the result you'll have because you've learned to honor your time and because it's time management, but it's mostly about honoring your time. It's different than just being busy. You are effective. Sometimes people think that they're being effective because they've been busy all day. But if you ask, okay, well, what did you accomplish? It was that literal expression of I had 15 tabs open on the computer and I, I bounced between those all day. And I know that people like to think we multitask, but task, but we actually don't. When you're dividing your attention between all those different tasks and maybe your phone that's on the desk or somebody in the house who keeps calling your attention, not going to be effective. So that's where the smarter than harder comes in, right? So we have to have space within our life to breathe, to unwind, to relax. And if you're in the idea that I need to manage this to do list and the tasks, there doesn't seem to be free time. And it may even, you may fall into bed at night because there was not one moment to Relax. Often when I'm coaching, people will get, I don't know, they have like a disbelief that this will work when I say we have to prioritize time for yourself. That has to come to the front of the list. And whether that's a half an hour in the morning or a reset during the day or before you go to sleep at night, transition between work and home, it really depends on the person. I am not someone who's going to tell you if you want to have a successful business, you must have the millionaire mindset and you must get up at 4.30 a.m. I'm not doing it. And I have a successful business. The clients I work with have successful businesses and most of them are not this 4.30 kind of thing. I feel like that's another way to punish yourself into success rather than finding the skills and the talents and the habits that will support your success. So good time management will help you to know what you can accomplish in a specific timeline. You become very aware of how long something takes you. And then this leads to the success, whether that's in career, your relationship. Imagine if you were someone who said, I'm going to show up at noon and you were actually that person who shows up at noon, the other person you're meeting is going to respect that. They're going to think, wow, I must really matter because this person showed up on time. And that was one of the things that we had to work on in our relationship, because I said to my, I can be really flexible on our weekends, like where we're going, what time we're getting there and everything. But if we have told someone we will be at their home or we will be at a restaurant or we will be at a show at a certain time, we will be there 15 minutes early. Because the stress that gets created by being late is not worth it. It's poor time management and it's poor awareness, proprioception of where you are in the in your world. And it may be that you think you can do one more thing. So this is where task, not living by task management, but rather by time management can really help. And that's where the success comes in because effective time management will have people seeking you, leaders coming to you for help, or opportunities to increase your um, success, your bottom line, all of that. So what do we do with this? What are some of the systems that I use for time management with my clients, with myself? Well, I fundamentally believe in block booking. If you are someone who is running your own business or who is able to alter your calendar. Say you work for someone that's fairly flexible about when you work, as long as your work is done, then you would look at when are you most effective, obviously. When are you the most awake after coffee? Thank you very much. What are your best times of the day? For instance, I'm recording this at six o'clock at night. 
because on the days where I don't have sessions all day long, six o'clock at night is when I excel. It's when I work out. It's when I'm most coherent. <laughs> and if I haven't been in session all day, a couple days in a row, it's when I have the most energy. So knowing that about yourself and then block booking for that very idea. Now, what do I mean by block booking? The task management and the time management will work together. We're not saying one is better than the other. Yes, I am. Time management is better than task management. But we're not saying you only do one. Just like everything else in life, there's integration. There's not one that's better than the other. It's simply integration. You have your task lists. You have the things that are required of you on a daily or weekly basis. Well, you look at your schedule and you put those blocks in. For instance, podcast recording, I will block out three or four hours because I also know once I get on a roll, I do really well and I want to stay in that. And then I can send the information over to Enrique and he gets three or four podcasts at a time so that he can then block book should he choose so that he's in the flow of editing and not bouncing between other programs. And Enrique, while you're editing this, if you're not doing that, maybe you should do that. So what it allows you to do is get into that very clear space of this is where my head is right now, because most of the tasks in our work lives, this is going to apply to the most, can be streamlined into categories. Now, obviously, this is not going to work if you are in a medical practice or if you work in a hospital, but you can apply this to your personal life in the days when you're home and have your ideas or whatever projects that you'd like to get completed grouped together so that you're not doing what I call my cleaning attention diversity, where I go from one room to the other to the other and drop off one thing. And then something in that room reminds me it needs to be done. So I go do that. And then I circle back around and I'm like, why did I leave these here? I apply this to my personal life as well, not because I want to be a robot, but because at the end of the day, I want to live in a clean house and I want to know everything is where it belongs and not feel so scattered. So you could do this on your days off if you wanted to. So you take like items, like with like, you group them so that your efficiency goes through the roof. And one of the ways to do this is called the Eisenhower matrix. And I'm going to include a sheet in this podcast in the show notes so that you can download it if you like. It's going to become a part of, I'm rolling out a bunch of coaching bundles that you will be able to download and own. Once you download them, you own them, do whatever you want with them, except resell them under your own name. However, they're meant to be coaching helpers so that you can start to apply some of these things in your life and see if it works. Just see if it works. So the Eisenhower matrix is a way to organize your tasks by urgency and importance and basically prioritize what is most important to you at the time. By doing this in the sheet, it's a very simple sheet where you will write down what is urgent, what's not urgent, what could I delegate, and what, what can I delete. And the deleted, oh, I love that because a lot of the times we spend so much so much of our precious time here while we're sucking oxygen on things that just do not light us up and they don't increase joy in our life or move the proverbial needle forward. So make multiple copies of this if you'd like or copy it uh, in the digital form and use it so that you can start to become aware of what is going on in your life, like what needs to be done, because 
on the task management side, a lot of you keep your to-do list in your head. And that's using a lot of your operating memory. It's causing stress because then there's the constant reminder, whether you were, you realize it or not, your computer is refreshing behind the scenes. It's constantly saying, don't forget that, don't forget that, don't forget that. By getting it out of your body, getting it out of your head, putting it down on these papers, and then deciding, is that urgent? Is that not urgent? Because sometimes this silly little brain of ours will say something is urgent and it is not. And then you can you know, spend some time looking at why did that feel like it was urgent? Was it because somebody else putting pressure on it? So as you merge your task management side with your time management side, you're also going to want to pay attention to how long does something actually take you. This blew my mind. Blew my mind. What I started doing was using the stopwatch on my watch, the stopwatch function. You can use your phone if you want or a timer on the, the stove. And I would set that time to start the minute I started a task. And something as simple as switching the laundry over, folding, because yes, I do fold right out of the dryer, time management. Something as simple as that, that I would, I did say took five minutes. It was 15. So that's three times what I thought it was. And then at the end of the day, I'm wondering, where did the time go? Like today, for instance, <laughs> I checked in. Uh, we got some snow. I needed to snow blow. And while I was out there, I was having a lot of fun. If you ever have the opportunity to run a snowblower, it is the most empowering thing that winter can bring us. Maybe skiing, but I'm not doing that. I was out snow blowing, got it put away, got everything cleaned up, you know, got to knock the snow, snow off or it'll just freeze and create ice. I come in the house and I'm like, oh, that was a fun half an hour. And it had been an hour and 15 minutes. I have a long driveway. And then there's another area that I have to do for according to the town. So that it took a while. And I thought that with just a half an hour, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go up and I'm going to get these other things done while I'm snow blowing. I mean, what do you think about except which direction to put the chute? So I was thinking about what I was going to do next. And that's you know, 45 minutes that if I wasn't time aware, I would have wondered at the end of the day, what happened to my day? Um, did I you know, space out somewhere? Was I not as efficient as I thought I was going to be? And this isn't about having a feeling of pressure. It actually takes the pressure off. Once you start realizing that something you thought was so you know, short in time took longer, you can be like, oh, okay. So now I know that I have to allow for that time and not to try to cram it in sideways between you know, three other things that you're doing. So when you do this time awareness, that's all you're going to do initially. You are going to become aware of, you know, do you know exactly how long it takes you to get to the grocery store? Do you know how long your shopping takes? How long are you in the pickup line after school getting your kiddos? How long does it take to return emails? So the first thing you're going to do is call the time study. And I recommend doing seven days. I love two weeks, but I can understand that it gets annoying. So I recommend doing at least seven days because you need to catch the patterns. And some of us, you know, with our schedules, we have patterns that show up. So if you're, you could do a note in your phone and not every minute, 15 minutes I did this, took me 20 minutes to go there. You know, with voice memo, you can absolutely just open that document and speak into it and say how long it took you to do. So after the seven days, when you're looking at it, I hope you'll have an appreciation, number one, just how busy you are and what you're accomplishing. But hopefully you're also finding those pockets of time 
that you thought weren't in there, but you know, you looked at your phone at the end of the day and it said you were on social media for two and a half hours. And they're designed to pull us in for those types. They want us to stay on the app. It's built right into the psychology of it. But until you wake up and become aware of how much time you're spending or where it's going, you will be someone who says, I don't have time. And when people say that to me, unless it truly is accurate and we look at your whole schedule, I'm like, whoa, you actually don't have time. Then we have to think about the management of that time to create the time. But very often it will come back to me in the time study that there were two hours watching Netflix or, you know, scrolling or, you know, gossiping with somebody. And I am not talking about making us all productivity, you know, prince and princesses. That's not what this is about. It's actually about you having some peace and creating some space in your life. But that's very hard to do until you actually get honest about where your time is going. So time study for seven days. And include in there, how long does it take you to get ready for bed? I am someone who likes a 10-minute shower. I, well, I try, guys. I really do try to minimize the water that I use and everything. But sometimes that's my de-stressor at the end of the day. And I just love being warm. But when I started doing the time study, not only was I appalled at how much water I was wasting, but I also realized, you know what? If I translate that 10 minutes to writing in the morning or doing a meditation or, you know, stretching at the end of the day, maybe I don't need those extra five minutes in the shower and wasting water. You know, maybe I can bring that time to a place that's respectful to myself and I'm still feeling nurtured and taken care of and I'm not wasting water. So we do have a well. You need to pay attention to those things on a well. We still pay attention to those things, but on a well especially. So once you do your time study and you begin to be aware of where your time is going, then you can start to look at it from the perspective of what is important and back to the Eisenhower matrix. What would I like to shift? And then back to the block booking, you can start to get like with like. If you are running your own business and you have days where you're in the office, not with clients, or if you're a writer and this is how your day is constructed, go ahead and put in those time frames of how long you're going to write. You will be amazed that your brain will get there before you and you will start feeling pulled to that block of time. So I have one day a week where I work on all corporate stuff. Everything in my business gets done on this day. And I don't see other people occasionally have a hair appointment on that day, but I spend the whole day and whatever the block book is there, I go. And, you know, sometimes I haven't completed a project, but I will give myself the permission to leave it where it is, as long as it's not owed to somebody, I will leave it where it is and go to the next block, always with a stretch in between, a walk around, get a different perspective. Now, if you're someone who does not feel like they could do this self-regulated, there are amazing apps out there. I use Focus Keeper for some reason. Maybe it's like the teacher we had in school or something. I set the focus keeper for 25 minutes. I might have a two hour block, but I set it for 25 minutes. And after 25 minutes, I look around the room, I take a drink of water, I touch my toes a couple times, you know, maybe I go to the potty. Something in that, I give myself a five minute break in there. And by using focus keeper, I'm not constantly looking at the clock to see when that 25 minutes is up. And here's, here's the important part. The computer, the phone are on do not disturb. And this would be true if you were, you know, spending your 
45 minutes or half hour or whatever it is with your kiddo at night reading a book. The phone should not be in the room with you, but if it is, put it on do not disturb and don't look at it. Spend the time with your kid. So with the focus keeper, somebody else is in charge. It will let you know and you can set it for how many times you want it to go around. I usually do four because I want the hour, right? And within that hour, I have 20 minutes of stretching and, you know, yeah, 20 minutes of stretching or looking around. And I don't always wander away. Sometimes it's just to give my eyes a break from the computer. So there are plenty of them out there. I happen to like it's based on the Pomodoro method. I just like that one. I thought it was very simple to use. There's a free version. By paying attention to some of these things and putting the steps in place, it brings peace. It brings a flow. And then sometimes you'll find that <laughs> things are getting done that you had planned on doing, but somebody else just went ahead and did it. Or I'm going to either email that person in my email block later and because they haven't gotten back to me. And then when you go to check your emails later, they've responded. And it's like, see, the universe and energies will line up. There are a couple things that I think are important. Starting your day with a plan, something that you want to accomplish. I don't want your whole list in front of you. I don't want you to task management manage. But what I would love is what are some of the priorities? Pick out three things that you would like to accomplish in that day. And then you can even do a tier of high, medium, low priority and use that. And this is based on the Eisenhower matrix too, but it's also like if you, I have found that if I do the thing that's low on the list, my brain is still thinking about the thing that's most important. So I may as well just go ahead and do that, get it done and do the happy dance. Because remember, we're supposed to happy dance after all this stuff. The Another thing is to make it into bite-sized pieces. So you know I love the expression micro movements matter. That applies to projects that we have to do, tasks we have to complete. Your brain will be happy with the smaller tasks. And then you get to do more happy dances. And you get to kind of chip away at the project in those bite-sized pieces. I believe in turning off the email. I don't even have it open if I'm working on a project. No emergency has ever, I don't know if I can say a blanket statement, but rarely do emergencies come through email. If somebody needs to get a hold of you, well, on your phone, you have the option of the people that would likely call you in an emergency that you really need to know about. You make them priority. And even if your phone's on do not disturb, if they call you twice, it will come through. So you can leave those emails for later. It is a time sink, especially if you have any newsletters that you're signed up for, vickybaird.com, sign up for the newsletter, you get a, a free PDF coaching bundle. Go ahead and do that, but do not check my email, the email that comes in to you on Wednesdays or Fridays if you are in your bundle or your batch time. Putting it in your calendar is imperative. Put that in there. I have meditation in my calendar. I have workouts in my calendar. You can color code them. And yes, yeah, sometimes things don't get done. I don't get a workout in, but I don't beat myself up for it because I know it's on that calendar for the next day or the following day. Being able to review where you've been is important. So that's why the time study would be helpful to you because I hope, and I, like I said earlier, I want you to appreciate you. I want you to feel like, yes, I want to create habits that lead me to whatever the success is in my life. And I also want to celebrate myself. And then through this, you may even find the things that you could delegate or outsource. I have been notoriously uh, protective of my email and getting back to people and being the one that has to answer. I'm the one that does the coaching. And that's not true. <laughs> that's not true. You know, when you hire people who are amazing and who understand your voice, often they do it better than I do. And I know Enrique does because 
he gets right back to people where I'm like, oh, I got to get to that. Oh, I got to get to that. So delegate, outsource, figure out what's a priority. There's this thing called the Pareto principle that 80% of results come for 20% of the work. And a lot of this is because you, when you do work smarter, you get more done and you identify the 20% of the things that are leading your life in majority. It's worth it. It's worth it to look at and to structure your, your time into awareness and segments so that you will get into the flow. I promise you. So in honoring of your time, I'm going to wrap this up. If you would like help with this, I'm available, vickybeard.com, Vicky Baird Coaching at all the social media platforms. And I look forward to hearing how you have learned to honor your time, respect your time, and be stinking proud of yourself. I will see you in the next episode. Thank you for listening to this episode of Intuition, Your Success Compass. I appreciate you being here. If you would like more information, about developing your intuitive skills, removing those blocks, and creating the life that feels the most successful to you, then head on over to vickybaird.com. That's V-I-C-K-I-B-A-I-R-D.com. And check out the courses, the groups, and the Spaces app that will allow you to be part of our community and know about upcoming events and specials. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next episode.